How's it going, my fellow reefers? As always, God bless you and thank you for being here. I'm Gage and this is Candy Coral Aquatics. If you're new to my channel, please seriously think about subscribing and hitting that little notification bell. This is where I talk about all things reefing. And more importantly, guys, this is where I give you the secrets to helping you become better hobbyists at this hobby we call reefing. Today, guys, I'm going to be doing another little product review. And today we're going to be discussing carbon dosing. So, the last video that I actually uploaded, which believe me, guys, I, I just made. So um, this video that I'm making will probably come out a day later. But the video that I just recorded that I'm going to be posting tonight, uh, I was actually talking about my Zoas and I couldn't remember for the life of me what they were called. So these Zoas right here up in front, those are called Nirvanas. I knew that I would remember it, but when I was on the spot, like making the video, I couldn't remember what the heck they were called. And I was talking about how um, there's multiple color morphs within uh, this group. And if anybody out there wants a frag, I've got a really nice, let me get the camera over here. I got a really nice frag actually sitting right here that I had actually fragged out. It only, it started off as like, literally like two or three polyps and you can see there's just a ton in there now but what's really cool about these nirvanas is they're all the same zoa but there's multiple color morphs within that colony so uh if anybody would like a frag of nirvanas i'll do my best to give you guys you know a couple of different colors um and i'd be more than happy to hook you guys up with a really fair price on those so let's go ahead and get back into today's video so guys today i'm going to be talking about carbon dosing and i'm going to be sharing you guys sharing with you guys um a little bit of experience that i had with the product uh nopox from red sea so nopox is a carbon dosing system from red sea it's specifically advertised as an algae management system so what does that mean well anytime you see something advertised as algae management it's really only doing two things removing nitrates and phosphates okay nutrients now nutrient is a very broad term it's something that can be used to describe a lot of different things in the reef tank but from here on out in this video i'm simply going to be referring to nitrate and phosphate when i say nutrients okay so what is nopox so essentially, guys, when we're talking about carbon dosing, there's lots of different methods people use to carbon dose, but carbon dosing all has the same end goal and or result, which is to produce nitrifying bacteria, okay? It's to produce a bacteria that is going to consume and eat up and use these nitrates and phosphates, thus for or thus, thus uh, removing them from the water column, essentially, uh, because the bacteria is eating them, and then that bacteria can be consumed by coral, um, or more effectively, removed in water changes and in protein skimming. So when you're doing any type of carbon dosing system, it is absolutely 100% essential that you do do protein skimming and you have some good filtration going on. Reason being is as this bacteria builds up, um, I have heard that it can become toxic. So you do want to make sure that you have a good appropriate removal system for the bacteria. And, and even if it wasn't something that became toxic or could potentially harm something, um, you have to remove that bacteria somehow anyways, because that bacteria is holding on to the nitrates and the phosphates. So if we don't remove the bacteria, and let's say the bacteria dies or breaks down or whatever, it's just re-releasing that nitrate and phosphate, so we're not actually removing the problem. So we need to be doing a lot of protein skimming, okay? If you actually read the instructions on this carbon dosing system, it specifically tells you to make sure, hey, you need to be doing protein skimming to be removing this stuff. Okay, so essentially the bacteria is just another form of transportation for the nutrients we're trying to get rid of, and then we have to actually export it ourselves through filtration, water changes, protein skimming out of the tank, it's, you know, ourselves for this to become extremely effective. Now, what is my overall thoughts on Nopox? So my personal opinion on Nopox, and here's what the bottle looks like. Um, it is dark in here, sorry about that. Um, but I turned the lights off just so we wouldn't get a lot of glare off the, the glass of the tank. If you guys want to see what the bottle actually looks like, just Google Red Sea Nopox and, and you'll get a picture of it. Not really worried about that. So, um, what are my personal feelings and opinions on Nopox? First of all, does it work? Yes, it works. How well does it work? It, from what I have found, it works really well at removing nitrates, but not particularly well at removing phosphates. 
So I did an experiment where I just let my tank go. I did not do filtration. I didn't do, well, when I say filtration, my filters were running, but I wasn't doing filtration management, meaning I wasn't replacing filters. I wasn't doing water changes. I was just doing top offs. I wasn't changing media, nothing like that. And then I tested my water. Um, now, while doing this, I was also dosing Nopox. I noticed that my nitrates did drop. Um, they did, they did be, you know, the Nopox removed my nitrates effectively, but my phosphate was 0 0.6, guys. 0 0.6. Huge spike in phosphate. Now, throughout dosing the Nopox, I did notice that it didn't affect my phosphate as much as I would want it to. So what I actually had to do to get my phosphate back down um, after this little experimentation was to actually dose GFO, okay? Granulated ferric oxide. That's what I used to actually remove my phosphates. So that being said, Nopox as a nitrate removal system, I think is very effective. And, you know, I don't want to sound unfair to the product. It probably does remove phosphates, However, in my personal experience, I would much rather lean towards something like Fosgard or GFO or even, you know, a liquid phosphate remover in itself rather than using Nopox strictly for phosphate management. Now, the instructions will tell you not to run any type of phosphate removal while dosing Nopox, but I really think that you should. And according to some of the other YouTubers that I watched uh, their videos and their reviews on Nopox for, um, just to get a little background before I actually personally bought the product and used it, I, uh, I did hear a lot of the same complaints that yes, it does do a good job with nitrates, but they were still having to run something to remove the phosphates. So just bear that in mind. Now, as far as how well does it work to clean up the tank, I will admit, guys, when I was dosing and using Nopox, my tank was visibly cleaner. I did not have to clean my glass near as often. The rock work looked cleaner. The sand looked a little bit cleaner, but thankfully, I've never really had a problem with my sand bed, so I guess I won't really, really count that. But the big deal to me was I didn't have to scrape the glass as much. So cleanliness definitely did improve. Now, how do I think you should use Nopox? Um, well, I think Nopox is something that you should keep in your arsenal. It, you should keep it on standby. It should be in your kit. But it's not something that you necessarily should make a habit of using. And here's why. I think once the Nopox has done its part and it's removed and maintained your nutrients, you should just quit using it. Quit using it, get better at water changes, get better at nutrient control, get better at filtration, get better at protein skimming. You know, this is really something that you should be using to say, oh my gosh, I have a problem. I need to get it under control before it causes a bigger problem and then wean yourself off of it and then go back to what has always been a staple in this hobby, which is just good husbandry, making sure that you're getting in there, getting your hands dirty, cleaning your tank out, cleaning your filters, make sure you're running a good protein skimmer, make sure you're using good RODI water, good quality salt, all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you're not doing all of that anyways, there really isn't a product out there that's going to save you, okay? You're always gonna have some type of creep up or problem, or you know, if you just quit using the product, the problems are always gonna come back because you're not really taking out the source of the problem. So <clears throat> that being said, Nopox is something that you should use when you get into trouble. Like, oh my gosh, I have an algae bloom. Oops, I let things go too far. Or oops, I fed too much. Or whatever the situation is, let that product get you back down to where you should be. And then go about other, you know, safer, easier, less involved methods, I guess you should say, of removing the nutrients. Okay, those natural more methods of removing the nutrients. Overall though, guys, I think Nopox is a pretty safe thing to be adding to your tank so long as you're not using it all the time and so long as you're following the instructions very closely. Now, one thing that I will suggest that I don't believe is in the instructions, make sure that when you dose this, you start off really, really slow. And here's why. You can create something called a bacteria bloom if you use this too rapidly. The other thing is, is if you use it too rapidly and stuff crashes in your tank as far as parameters go, well, you guys know that that can cause all sorts of problems too. So here's my recommendation. Let's say, again, for easy math, because you guys know I like easy math, 
if your dose is going to be three milliliters per 25 gallons per day, let's say that that's, that's what you have to be dosing, okay? I would suggest starting off at half of that. So one and a half milliliters per 25 gallons per day. The reason I say start off at half is because this really truthfully is a powerful product. It is a great product at what it does. And that being said, you have to be careful with it because if you start off at that high daily dose, even though it's suggested and you have all those nutrients for that daily dose, even though it's suggested, you can still cause damage to the system and you can still cause bacteria blooms. So play it safe, guys. For the first you know, few days, let your system adjust, let the bacteria slowly build up through the carbon dosing process and start off with just half of what is recommended for your system. I promise you it's still going to work and I promise you it's going to save you some headaches. So after the first few days of doing half of the dosage, go ahead and step it up and start adding what you should be adding and you guys should not have any issues whatsoever. That's the best way to do it and that's the safest way to do it. And then go ahead after about a week and test and see where your levels are. If your levels are good and stable, maybe go ahead and dose for a few more days to keep them there. And then while you're doing that, kind of go over your tank and figure out why your levels are high to begin with and come up with a better solution than carbon dosing to remove them. Because what you can actually do through carbon dosing and, and what carbon dosing really actually does is create what's called a low nutrient system, okay? A low nutrient system is kind of that thing that I think is in fashion right now, if you will, where everybody wants a low nutrient system. That's the thing. We don't want nutrients at all. Everything's got to be squeaky clean. Well, here's the reality, guys. The ocean isn't even squeaky clean, okay? Corals have to have some phosphate. They have to have some nitrate. Fish poop is like fertilizer, okay? You use cow poop to grow your garden. You use fish poop to grow your coral garden. There's got to be some nutrients in the system. If we're removing all the nutrients in the system, that's like trying to grow corn or tomatoes or beans or whatever. It's like trying to grow vegetables in, in a sand pit full of nothing, right? It's bare. There's no nutrients in the soil for the crops to grow. Well, it's the same thing in an aquarium. If we take out all the nutrients in the water, there's no fertilizer for these corals to grow. So just bear that in mind when you carbon dose. Use it as a tool. Don't use it as a staple to your everyday tank maintenance because I think in the long run, keeping nutrients too too low especially if you don't have a heavy hand when it comes to feeding is really just going to cause you problems in the long run now there is a theory where you can do low nutrient systems with high nutrient input however this is something that i really don't want to discuss in this video and it's something that i don't really want to share with you guys at this time because i don't want any beginners out there to think hey this sounds great start doing it and completely destroy your tank because there really is a method and appropriate way to do that so again, guys, use NOPOX when needed and then kind of go back while you're using it and figure out why your nutrients are high to begin with and do your very best to correct them naturally first. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it gives you guys some insight on whether or not you should be using NOPOX in your system. If you have any questions, as always, guys, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly and effectively as possible. Until next time, guys, God bless, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.